pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world there's so much fun so many brand new things to discover waking with the sun gotta get the job done oh theodore and emily Voda, hank and george and the harbor master too hello i'm just doing a little cleaning up what's this it's a baseball glove but i don't own a baseball glove oh dear oh this belongs to my friend rodney i borrowed this from him last week i forgot to give it back i should call him and tell him i still have it no i could go over and just leave it on his porch I wonder why it, it's so hard to tell the truth sometimes. But it is. Just ask Theodore. It was a fine, sunny day in the big harbor. Theodore was peacefully floating along when suddenly he heard a sound. It was a wonderful sound, a new sound, a clear, happy sound. Where is it coming from? He said out loud. From me, Theodore. It was Northumberland submarine. I found this old bell at the bottom of the harbor. You like it? Oh, yes, said Theodore. Northumberland was always finding great things under the water at the bottom of the harbor. <sighs> I like the sound, said Northumberland as he yawned. Makes me sleepy. Of course, Northumberland was sleepy because he always sleeps during the day. Could I borrow your bell, Northumberland? Asked Theodore. Please? Well, Northumberland was tired after cruising under the ocean all night, and he did want to get some sleep. You promise to take good care of it? He asked. I triple promise, said Theodore. Well, uh, I guess it'll be all right, said the submarine as he yawned again. Uh, uh, hooray! shouted Theodore. I'll take very good care of the bell. Well, oh, you can count on me. Well, Theodore was thrilled to have the bell. And when Hank saw it, he was pretty excited, too. Let's hear it again, Theodore, said Hank. Please? Okay, said Theodore. But I don't want to wear it out. Can I try it, please? Asked Hank. No, Hank, said Theodore. Northumberland lent it to me, and I have to look after it. Please, Theodore, please, pleaded Hank. Careful, Hank, said Theodore as Hank bumped him. Theodore, continued Hank. Oh, he was so excited, he bumped Theodore again. Hey! But it was too late. The bell sank with a gurgle. What do we do now, wondered Hank. I'll, I'll have to tell Northumberland that I lost his bell said Theodore quietly. Ooh, he's not gonna like that, said Hank. You promised to take good care of it. Yes, I did, said Theodore. And we felt terrible. Theodore, said Hank, maybe we can get the bell back on our own. Well, said Theodore slowly, I don't know. Sure we can, shouted Hank. We just have to... We, we just have to figure out how. Well, okay, said Theodore. But deep inside, he really wasn't sure it was the right thing to do. Fortunately, Benjamin Bridge had noticed the exact spot where the bell fell into the water. You need help of a special kind, said Benjamin. Help that knows how to really unwind. Unwind, said Hank. It was another one of Benjamin's riddles. I get it, called Theodore. We know a bird that can unwind. We do, wondered Hank. Who? Bobby Barge, said Theodore. You see, Bobby had a crane that could unwind enough rope to reach the bottom of the deep harbor. Of course, said Hank. Bobby can bring up the bell with his crane. I'll go get it, said Theodore. We'll have it back in no time, said Hank happily. <sighs> what back it was northumberland northumberland cried hank startled oh, what are you doing here oh i can't sleep 
Oh, I really miss my bell, said the sub. Oh, where's Theodore? Have you seen him? Yes, said Benjamin. No, said Hank, both at the same time. Well, have you seen my bell? asked Northumberland. Yes, said Hank. No, said Benjamin, again, both at the same time. Is, uh, is something wrong? asked Northumberland. No, said Hank. Maybe, said Benjamin. Well, now Northumberland was starting to worry. Does Theodore still have my bell? he asked. Well, began Hank. You see... Uh, I'm so tired, said Northumberland. I need a nap. No, tell Theodore I want my bell back as soon as I wake up. I sure hope Bobby Barge can find that bell before then, said Hank. Yes, Bobby Barge is able to bring up lots of things from the bottom of the harbor by dragging his crane hook. The problem is, he never knows what his hook will grab. How about an old anchor? asked Bobby. No, that's not it, said Theodore, beginning to sound a bit discouraged. So far, you found an old tire, a propeller, and an anchor, said Hank. Oh, maybe if you told me what it is you're looking for, I could do better, said Bobby. Oh, uh, it's a surprise, said Theodore. He didn't want anyone else to know about the bell. But, but thanks for trying, Bobby. Trying what? asked George. Nothing, shouted Hank, Theodore, and Benjamin all together. What are you all doing here? asked George. Everyone looked at Theodore. Why did I ever borrow that bell? He thought to himself. Um, I, I'm looking for, he began, for, for you. George looked surprised. For me? Uh, right, continued Theodore. I, I think I heard the dispatcher calling us. Well, then let's go, said George. There must be a job waiting. Um, uh, uh, coming, called Theodore. Hank, keep looking, he said quietly. But at that moment, Northumberland returned. Hank, he said, where's Theodore? He's uh, with George, said Hank. With George, repeated Northumberland. Uh, well, George will probably want to borrow my bell too, huh? I better get it from Theodore right now. I don't think he'll find it over there, said Hank to himself. The dispatcher was rather surprised to see George and Theodore. I'm sorry, George, but I, I have no jobs for you at the moment. But then why did you call for us? asked George. I didn't call you, said the dispatcher. What Theodore said, began George. And then he noticed that he was alone. Yes, George? asked the dispatcher. Um, um nothing, said George. Something smells fishy around here, said George. And it isn't the fish. After a bit more unsuccessful searching, Hank had returned Bobby Barge to his dock. I'm really sorry I knocked the bell off your deck, Theodore, said Hank. Thanks, Hank, said Theodore quietly. Theodore, I don't like it when you play tricks like that, said George. The dispatcher didn't have any jobs for us. Theodore, said Northumberland. Where's my uh, bell? But before Theodore could answer any of them, George moved in. What bell? He said. Say, shouldn't you be asleep, Northumberland? Asked George. Yes, I should be. Northumberland was starting to feel very grumpy at being kept awake. But I want my bell back. He continued. Do you have it, George? Did you borrow it from Theodore? What are you talking about, said George. I know you always like the stuff I find at the bottom of the harbor, George, continued Northumberland. Well, that's true, said George. But he still couldn't figure out what Northumberland was talking about. Well, then where is it, said Northumberland. Where's what, asked George. My bell, thundered Northumberland. Well, Theodore felt terrible. He 
He'd never seen Northumberland so upset. And now, Northumberland was blaming George. I want my bell back right now, demanded Northumberland. I don't know where your dumb old bell is, snorted George. George was beginning to get upset, too. And Theodore knew that none of this was George's fault. He had borrowed the bell, and he had lost it. Theodore also knew he should have said so long ago. He took a deep breath. The bell is right below us, he said. You mean George threw it back in? asked Northumberland. No, said Theodore. I dropped it. My bell's at the bottom again, said Northumberland sadly. Under all this water... Can you tell me, Theodore? He asked. I should have, Northumberland, said Theodore. But I thought I could get it back before you found out. Theodore, you promised to be careful with my bell, said Northumberland. You triple promised. Well, Hank felt very sorry, too. And he knew it wasn't all Theodore's fault. He tried to speak in a loud voice, but the words came out in a kind of a squeak. I... <coughs> I bumped Theodore, said Hank. The next words came easier. And the bell fell into the harbor. Thanks, Hank, said Theodore quietly. And then things just got so complicated, said Hank. We're really sorry, Northumberland. We are, said Theodore. I should have told you right from the start. Me too, added Hank. Well, just saying those words made the two tugs feel a whole lot better. Well, said George, I'm glad we got all that straightened out. But the bell is still missing, said Theodore sadly. Well, at that moment, the water began to move and bubble. And then Northumberland appeared up from under the water. found, said the happy submarine. The bell, said all the tugs at once. To fetch a bell from under the waves so blue and green, said Benjamin, you need someone special named Northumberland Submarine. All the tugs shouted it together. Shh, said Northumberland. I really... I'm certainly glad I remembered the story of Theodore and the borrowed bell. I think I know what I have to do now. It's not going to be easy, but I have to call Rodney and tell him that I have his glove. It's right here. I, I had it a minute ago. I can't... <laughs> no, I can't put this off any longer. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Hello, Rodney. Yes, yes, it's me. Uh, Rodney, I... You... Have I ever told you the story of Theodore and the Borrowed Bell? Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat. A friendly tugboat. For Theodore and Emily. For Hank and George and the harbor master too.